thank you all for being here. I'd like to call this uh, regular meeting of the Development Review Board to order. And I'd like to introduce uh, my board members, actually starting at my right here. And uh, Kevin O'Connell, board member. Oh, get microphone. Kevin O'Connell, board member. Uh, and I'm Rob Goodwin, the chair. Meredith Crandall, staff. Captain Burgess, board member. And on our Zoom platform, we have um, Michael. Are you here? I'm here, Michael Lazorczak, board member. Thank you. Okay. Uh, and then we got Joe. Kevin, board member. Abby. Abby White, board member. All right. Gene. Gene Leon, hi, board member. Okay. Um, want to do a point of process real quick so how many do board members do we have tonight one two three four seven six seven seven so we have a full quorum yep full quorum everybody's so, here and everybody's yeah. here for the party <laughs> uh, perfect um okay so i will turn now over to meredith to provide a review of our remote meeting uh procedures and uh there you go all right, so everybody who's on via Zoom, I'm going to be sharing my screen. Um, except it went to the wrong thing. Hold on one second. There we go. All right, so the slideshow part is really for people who are watching via um, Orca Media so that they can see how to log in, but there's going to be some other information that's for everybody, especially anyone who hasn't done a mm -hmm. Zoom meeting with the um, Montpelier Development Review Board or Design Review Committee before. Um, so, for those viewing this meeting via Orca Media, you can participate in tonight's DRB meeting via the Zoom platform by either using this video link, you can just type it right into your web browser and it should take you right into the meeting, or call this phone number and plug in this meeting ID number here and you will be able to um, talk and, and listen. You just won't be able to see what's what everybody else is seeing on your computer or your smartphone. Um, if someone is having, oops, I forgot to update this. If someone's having issues getting in, please just email me. Don't email Mike, he's not on tonight, um, but I can help you log in. Um, my email address is also on the city website. Um, for those who are attending via the Zoom platform, turning on your video is optional. Um, please do keep your microphone on mute when you're not speaking. This will reduce background noise. Um, and please use the Zoom chat function only for troubleshooting or logistics questions. If you have something substantive to say about an application um, or otherwise have some sort of comment you wanna make to the, to the board, um, please raise your hand um, either there if you have your video on and we'll see you or use your raise hand button on the zoom platform and um, the chair will call on you at a at an appropriate time um, and then you'll be able to make that substantive comment then um, if the public is unable to access this meeting and i'll find out that find that out via my email which i'll have open then the meeting will need to be continued to a time and place certain if I can't help them get into the meeting because we did um, list the online access as a viable option. Um, I'll now hand the meeting back over to the chair. Okay, at this time, I will uh, accept a motion to approve the agenda for tonight's meeting. So moved. Second. Motion by Kevin and second by Gene. Uh, Kevin, how do you vote? Yes. Catherine? Yes. Abby? Uh, Abby, you're muted. Sorry, yes. Joe? Yes. Gene? Yes. Michael? Yes. Rob, myself votes yes. That uh, is unanimously approved. Thank you all for uh, coming out this evening. Um, just a note, we do not have any uh, participants, uh, representatives of the applicant or the public in the room this evening. Um, just uh, three board members and uh, one uh, 
trusty staff person, uh, <laughs> Meredith. And our, and our Orca Media and our, cameraman. Our Orca, Orca Media. Uh, so this is, that's where everyone's at. And uh, I will turn over to Meredith because we only oh. have one application this evening. No, we have actually have For one thing we got to do. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we have to uh, approve the minutes. So um, board members, um, if you have reviewed the minutes, um, we I would entertain a motion for either comments or um, to approve it. Okay. We've only got four people that can four, do it. Yeah, I, I was not that. I motion like to approve. So that was Gene moves. So Gene has a motion to approve the minutes from uh, 222 2022. Is there a second? Second. All right. Motion by Gene and second by Abby. Um, so Gene, myself, Abby, and Michael are those. Oh. Oh. Nope, Joe. Joe are those that are eligible to vote. Um, so, Abby, how do you vote? Yes. Gene? Yes. Joe? Yes. Rob, myself, was yes. The minutes for 222-2022 are approved. <laughs> You just like saying that. <laughs> I do. I do like saying that. It was a, you, it's a great you day. You won't be able to ever do that again. No, never again. Until, yeah, I won't be alive then. Yeah. Yeah. I don't <laughs> <think>. <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay. So we have one application this evening for 203 uh, Barry Street um, for uh, conditional use approval of a ceramic studio. And um, I will turn it over to Meredith for a brief overview of the. Uh, project and how we got here. Okay. Um, so as Rob said, this application is mostly before the board because it is a conditional use. Um, art studios are considered to be in the um, in, in an industry. Um, and so they are, I think it is industry. Hold on one second. Now my brain just fuzzled out on me. This is what the exact term is, and everybody knows me, I want the right term. So it's uh, considered to be in the light manufacturing use. And here in the Riverfront District, light manufacturing is a conditional use. Um, so the this has to come before the board. Um, there's a few other tweaky little things, mostly because the parcel itself is a non-conforming parcel. It's a very small parcel. It's already fully developed with what used to be the Berry Street Market. Um, and so there is no space there for off-street parking. Um, and, and most of the parcel is already you know, built out. There's a little bit of space back in the back. Um, so um, even if it wasn't a conditional use, if any new use were put into this building that needed off street parking, it would have to come before the board for that exemption to the minimum number of parking off street parking spaces. Um, so that's another thing that's here before the board for. Um, and then um, there's also because of there's a, there's a little question about the landscaping um, that comes in where I've made some suggestions on how they might be able to meet um, the total site landscaping requirement. Um, because of there is so little green space on this parcel already. Um, a, a little tweak, but those are the those are the biggies. Um, it's in my my mind, there's ways to approve it. And I've put some suggestions in the staff report. Yeah, yeah. But I think that probably handing it over to Frank and Heather to describe the the okay. business plan Perfect. would make a lot of sense. Perfect. Hey, uh, Frank and Heather, welcome here. Um, first things oh, first, you. anybody that um, wishes to uh, make public testimony tonight, um, in addition to Frank and Heather, um, we need to swear you in as witnesses. Um, so other than Frank and Heather, is there anyone else that wishes to speak tonight on this application? Trevor, I mean, it's just going to be raising your right hand and saying that you're going to Whatever you say is going to be truthful. If you want to then comment later, we'll need to swear you in at that point. Okay. Yeah. Can't read who. So Trevor been... Cole and Kelly Taft, they okay. submitted yep. a letter. Perfect. So that's already in the packet. Yep. And Kathy, you don't think you're going to talk? Okay. Okay. So, so we have no actual representative for the public. Yeah, we do. Frank oh, and Heather. Frank and Heather. Oh. Frank Solani oh, okay. and Heather are here. Very good. Yep. Okay, yep. So they need to be sworn in too, right? Yes. Yeah. So we have four people. 
and essentially two parties being uh, sworn in here. Um, so um, all those interested in providing testimony on this application, would you please raise your right hand to be sworn in as a witness? One, two, three, four, okay. Do you solemnly swear that the testimony you are about to give is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth under the pains and penalties of perjury? Yes. 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 See four nods slash yep. yeses. We're good. Um, great. Um, so, yeah. So, Frank and Heather, I'd just like to give you this opportunity to sort of give an overview of your project and provide us any information uh, that you that you think might be pertinent to tonight's meeting. Um, well, we plan on converting what is now the Barry Street Market into my ceramic studio. And it would be a private studio. Um, I would use it to produce my work. There would be a small showroom where I would store work. I would have limited um, shop hours while I was there working. Uh, and I would use the space primarily um, to produce my work and to, uh, sell, it. to sell it. Uh, most of my work now is sold online. I also sell at the Farmer's Market in Montpelier, and I have several galleries that carry my work, also in other parts of the country. So I ship work to them, and they sell it. Um, we can, we've can. we reviewed the the report, which is very thorough. Um, we No, I mean, it's, it's wonderful. We agree with the recommendations. Um, in terms of the landscaping, that's not an issue. Um, as, I, as I mentioned, um, as we mentioned, uh, we, we have plans to get a bunch of shade-loving perennials anyway for our own house. So um, providing those perennials in the back for landscaping is not an issue. Um, I think we, we're also prepared to address the pH issue for the public, Department of Public Works, but maybe I'm getting ahead of myself. We're excited. Thank you. Thank you for having us here. We're very excited about the project. <laughs> It's good to be excited. Yeah, no, it's a, it's great that you were able to have some time to look into those comments from the staff and the staff report. That will certainly be helpful. Um, if you just back up for a second. So I, my understanding is you're planning on to doing a little bit of a modification to the staircase in the back. Could you kind of walk us through like the reasons behind that planning? And uh, uh, Yes, there is a an apartment upstairs that is accessed um, from a stairway on the exterior of the building and a back porch. And the back porch is so thoroughly deteriorated that it needs to be replaced. And in replacing it, the stairs are going to have to be replaced as well. So um, that's the real reason. If, if it was there was serviceable, we would certainly prefer leaving it exactly the way that it was. But that's not really possible considering um, the state of the structure that's there now. And in the course of replacing that porch and the stairs, we need to remove a small shed structure um, in the back of the building. And that will not be replaced. That will, that will be removed. And um, that removal will actually produce the space, the little bit of extra green space um, for the property. Okay. And the stairs will also have steel grates, which will also um, increase, increase the permeability a little bit. So if I may, um, yes, the, Kevin. The, uh, the upstairs is currently an apartment and will stay as an apartment. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. And downstairs is, I mean, it was Barry Street Market. What's its current use? Right now it's, it is the market. Oh, I mean, no. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's, no one's, no one's using it as a market. Okay. But it, yeah. Okay. That's fine. That's, yeah. that's all I have. Um, so the, the stairs in the rear, is that the primary access to the, to the stop or is there multiple access? It is. Okay. And we'll, and we'll continue to be. And we'll there. continue to be, yes. Absolutely. Okay. Um, yeah. Partially out of, out of curiosity, but I think also important for uh, context. So it's a matter of like scale, like uh, a pottery studio like this, you know, how many machines do you have and how much clay do you you know, you go through um, in, a, in a year or a month or? I have one potter's wheel. Most of my work is actually slip cast. So I make forms, I make molds of them, and then I cast the parts um, and assemble pots from those. Um, as far as machinery goes, the only 
machinery, I guess, is, is really a kiln. Um, uh, nothing that really is extremely loud or produces vibrations or anything like that, really. Um, it's, uh, when I think about it in terms of uh, an industrial process, I don't think of myself as someone uh, who runs a factory. Uh, I guess mostly people would refer to me as an art potter. Um, yeah. Oh, yeah, thank you very much. I think that's very helpful to place it within the um, light manufacturing uh, use here, whatnot. Um, before we get into sort of diving into the staff before, do board members have any sort of additional um, questions of where we're at now? I've got one. Could you talk us through the, um, the foot traffic and the, the other people who'd be there aside from yourself? I know you'd mentioned classes in the future. Um, right now, I don't have any concrete plans to teach classes. Um, invariably what happens is that people ask me if I teach classes. And in the past I have worked in places where there are communal studios. So I would not have been teaching in my own studio, but I would have been teaching at the community studio affiliated with the school I was at. Um, running a communal studio and having people in a communal studio is a very different thing than having your own studio. Uh, something as simple as switching the type of clay you use. Most of my work is made out of porcelain and um, it tends to be a hard material to work at work with if you're not familiar with it. So things like stonewares tend to be used more in community classes, classes I would be teaching. And just something as simple as someone introducing stoneware into the studio means I would have to clean everything down before I switched back to porcelain. So um, Teaching classes is not something that I really plan on doing. It's something that I wouldn't want to tell you, oh, I'm never going to teach classes, and then turn around and say, oh, I'm teaching classes. Um, if I did teach classes, the space is so small, there wouldn't be more than four to six people in there. Um, and I, I can't see myself having uh, open studio hours beyond the hours that I would be teaching in class. So the only time students would be in there would be during class hours. And the class is typically um, between two and four hours long, somewhere in there. It's, it depends on where you're teaching. I've taught places where a class is five hours long. I've taught places where they're 45 minutes. I've taught places, you know, but they're somewhere between those two. But it's, uh, it's a very different thing to run a teaching studio and to run a professional studio. And um, running a teaching studio is often a hindrance to a professional studio. Mm -hmm. so, I, I hope, does that answer any yeah, of those thank questions? You. Okay, well, so moving moving on here, um, we can delve into the, the staff report and just make sure we cover all the bases here with some of the um, issues that were bulleted. Um, so on um, the first issue, we covered the first part, which is sort of the general um, nature of the project. And um, we talked about that this is like manufacturing conditional use uh, in this uh, in this district. And um, but um, so I guess the first thing is talking about the dimensional standards. And as Meredith mentioned briefly, the, you know, it's, there's an existing nonconformity, which is not uh, uncommon in, in Montpelier um, and whatnot. Um, so, and the particular area of like focus um, on this nonconformity was the 80% maximum lot um, coverage. Um, so maybe it makes more sense. Meredith, do you think you could just sort of walk us through the, you know, the nonconformity of 80%? Yeah. It seems to make sense to me, but, uh, you know, I, I think you could probably explain it better. <laughs> um, so I wasn't going to ask Frank and Heather to get an exact square footage of how much of the property is currently um, pervious surface where water can flow down through because when you, I mean, just looking at the parcel and with the stairs currently being roofed um, and the deck in the back mostly being roofed in the shed, it's obviously 
it's obvious that more than 80% of the parcel is covered with surfaces that shed water. I mean, there's, there's no question about that. Um, and the, the good thing here, though, is that that's a current condition, right? That's an existing nonconformity where the parcel currently doesn't meet the standard. Um, and with what Frank and Heather are proposing, they're proposing to remove the shed, change the stairs to a surface that lets water through, and the upper landing where those stairs then meet the covered, new covered decking porch, that's going to let water through as well. And so they have decreased the coverage maximum. It may still not be meeting the 80% standard, but they've improved it. Um, and so given that situation that this was an existing nonconformity that they bought purchased um you know my my suggestion is to say that because they're at least improving the situation it can be approved yeah, I, would agree absolutely. With that. I would agree with that thank with you for the dimension. the great summary <laughs> absolutely um so moving moving on, so section three thousand four of the of the regs pertains to a demolition, which I guess you, you'll be demolishing the the shed, uh, you know, in the stairs, and then rebuilding the stairs uh, largely in the you know in the, in the same footprint or exactly in the same footprint. Um, so you know, coming to this, I guess this is a question question here for Frank and Heather, and I'm assuming it's yes, but. Um, you know, would you be willing to sort of a condition that, uh, you know, within 60 days of this demolition to have that that removed and, um, you know, all the way from the site and taken care of? Yeah. Yes, absolutely. Con considering the fact that there is no space on the site, ah, well, whatever, well. whatever is demolished and removed from the building, I, I personally would want to have it removed as soon as possible. Okay. Uh, well, thank you. Um, so we're going to skip over the next couple, you know, sections outlines because uh, riparian areas, wetlands, and steep slopes don't apply to this uh, project. Um, along with, um, you know, staff did not find that erosion control was a particular um, issue of concern, um, and I believe that the board would agree with that. Um, so we're going to flip down to um, access and circulation. Um, section here, which is on page nine of the staff report, if you're following along. And um, I think the, um, we, we will talk more about this in the conditional use review, um, but I think generally the information that we've seen from the applicants uh, and the current use of the building that we're not seeing much change at all um, related to the factors um, related to this. Um, board members, I'm seeing nods here that they agree with that, uh, that finding. Um, so the next uh, section here, which we should spend a little bit of time on here, is uh, the parking uh, and loading um, areas. And um, does anyone on the board want to want to want to take it take take a lead at this issue, or uh, shall I keep plugging along? Uh, I I think you're doing a great job, Rob. So I would continue plugging along. <laughs> All righty. <Perfect. laughs> Um, so, um, we have the ability here to have the discretion as a board to waive some of the requirements under, um, these, uh, this, this section. Um, but maybe I'll start here by a question to Frank and Heather. Um, and, uh, let me just phrase this, figure out my, my, my wording here. Um, as far as like, you know, the change from how that building is currently being used in your proposed, uh, you know, studio, um, do you feel like there will be an increase in necessity for parking and loading areas? Like, you know. I, I don't think so. I don't um we live just a couple blocks away so I I won't be driving there I, I will be walking there um people that come to um you know see the work um they may drive there but um there's 
it, I every time I've walked past there, there always seems to be plenty of parking on Barry Street there close to the studio. Um, and I don't see more than one person, one carload of people coming at a time. So so there yeah, there is on street parking available on, you know, on Barry Street, as was probably used uh, for patrons of the Barry Street market. Nothing has changed in that regard uh, in the last couple of years. Is that correct? That is correct. Yeah. Yes. yeah, there's always plenty of parking on Barry Street on both sides. Yeah. It, it was a little bit different when there was the Barry Street Market and Kismet right. restaurant. And there was occasionally some tension between those two businesses. Uh, but uh, that was years ago. And uh, the hours of operation will be different too. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, so, I, I mean, I think in summary here, as, as staff suggests that the, you know, the conditional use of changing use isn't going to <laughs> have, be much of a difference from what has historically been used, uh, you know, there, um, which I think gives me, you know, enough information and I think yeah. the board to uh, totally. sort of go ahead and uh, um, not require any additional loading zones or off, or, you know, or parking or whatnot. Um, so, I think we're good there. Um, okay, so we had a little bit of a uh, discussion here on uh, the landscaping and uh, screening requirements. My understanding is that you know you're proposing to do a little bit of uh, work, you know, and replacing the where the shed is and whatnot. Could you just elaborate on that a little bit? You want me to go? Sure. Yeah, so we, um, so I, I think it was either 36 square feet or 38 square feet of, of planting that would be required back there. That's, that's not an issue. I mean, some of the things that we've been looking at, I don't know if any of you are gardeners, but we were looking at um, some verbinum, some astilbe, some hushera, like big um, leafy, um, I don't think anyone's going to see it, but still, <laughs> they're like big leafy, nice looking, shade loving perennials. So um, we could get a little bit of life back there. And um, so my understanding from the application and the staff report that you might need to install a new vent for the kiln or whatnot. Um, and the suggestion was this could be, uh, you know, painted to enhance the screening. Is that, is that correct? It could be. <clears throat> Sorry. <clears throat> Sorry. It could be easily painted. The vent is I, um, like a five inch pipe that sticks out of the side of the building. It's it's not very big at all. It's like a um, like a, a kitchen vent or a vent that you would have out of your bathroom, out of the exterior of your house. It's that kind of thing. It's, it's not a big heavy duty thing. And, and what side of the building would that go off or do you not know yet? Uh, I'm not sure. I imagine it would go out of the back of the building. Oh. Okay, well, I think that that takes care of landscaping and screening. Uh, we have certainly very minimal uh, changes to the exterior of the building, uh, you know, which makes sense here. Um, and um, so as we move along here, we can start our uh, conditional use review, which is on page 16 of the staff report. Um, this relates to chapter uh, 330, which is the conditional use standards. Um, so the first issue here, and I believe there were some emails um, that were distributed to the board. Um, Meredith, would you like to just share that information about the pH levels? Uh... Yeah. Um, so uh, just to summarize for anybody who hasn't read the staff report, um, when the Department of Public Works reviewed the application, they didn't have any big concerns their their only real worry was the with the wastewater and from the clays and the glazes that are used some of them depending on which you pick can really um, um, lower ph values in the white wastewater and montpelier sewer system can't accept waste streams with a ph lower than 5.5 so i got that information to frank and he came back to me with some information um that said that hold on one second um uh one the the type of clay he was using um 
Hold on. Gotta go to the right one. Um, well, one, he uses and touches the clay all the time. <laughs> so um, that's one of the one ways to tell that it's not a really low pH. Um, and he got some pH test strips and check those and the um, wastewater from his clay water buckets where he reclaims clay, right? So the, the clay he doesn't use is gonna soak in that um, and to keep it from getting dried out. That water um, was a pH around seven or eight. And same with the, um, you call it glaze water, Frank. I don't know if that's like water that when you're rinsing off the glazes, yeah, like often you'll have to just sponge off excess glaze in an area, and I, I save all that too. Yeah, so he saves all the wastewater, um, and he also has a system. One of the things he, other pieces of information he gave me was that um, he also recovers the silt. Um, so even though that wasn't something that the Department of Public Works was worried about, he made sure to let us know that he uses slip traps in his shop sinks. So this allows all the silt to settle out of wastewater before it's discharged from the studio. Um, and he says he usually actually collects his wastewater to pour off the clear water the next day. Um, so he tries to... You may have to explain this, <laughs> Frank, but he said, once you have a full bucket of leftover slip, you dry it out to plastic consistency and press tile with it. So that there's no, almost no waste from his process and very little other than clear water goes down the sink. Um, everything else is left behind and recycled to make tile. Um, and he'll have one sink at 203 Berry Street that will be equipped with one of these slip traps to help collect everything. Um, so I think that that I haven't heard back. I sent this information on to Department of Public Works, um, but Kurt Monica, I think, was out um, on end of day Friday and today. So he hasn't been able to, to respond back. But it sounds sounds to me like we have a lot of information on that right. um, where the board could potentially just approve it, knowing that, um, you know, he'll still need to get potential with adding the new sink. There may, there may be a, a new connection with um department of public works to get approval there right um i guess on, the, on this issue i'm just trying to think like you know in perpetuity that for the feasible future the current operations of you know of, of mm -hmm. your uh um you know business uh you know seem to be fine and a non-issue but um you know maybe we condition something to say that if there are changes in the process or whatnot that um, that would trigger a conversation with public works not necessarily back here at the board but just to make sure that we're bit covered there yeah i mean we can also the condition there can be a condition that it that the the waste stream can't be below that 5.5 .5 ph right. without yeah however that works well, right now the uh, public works won't take a uh, wastewater with a lower pH than five. Right, but once the sinks so, in, if the if the say the you know, Frank no longer is at the ceramic studio and somebody else buys it but yeah. uses a different kind of clay, right. having that condition in should, here should, protects it. Yeah, we should have that condition. Yeah. 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 Would that would that yeah. be okay with? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that would be fine. And then you've been using the same clay for how many? You know. Yeah. 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 Um, okay, so the next conditional use item here is um, traffic. Um, just ask what, what you anticipate any changes in, in the traffic pattern or with your proposed studio or um, whatnot. I, I, I don't anticipate that many people rushing out to buy coffee cups. I mean, we wish, we right? <laughs> <laughs> Having a traffic circle. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> well, yeah, uh, I don't. I don't anticipate increased traffic. I I would imagine that the traffic would be less than if it was operating as the market, which it is the way that it's configured now. So, I mean, that's the uh, yeah. if it were if we're somebody who were trying to reopen that market. Um, because the market has been 
out of use for over a year, they'd have to get a new permit right. and it would have to, it would be a higher yeah. just parking requirement now because a market sees much faster use that's right. um and you know are in a rush. people are in a rush it's that's more of a moderate to high traffic use yeah. whereas the art studio is a limited customer traffic use especially when frank already has such a yeah. high internet presence yeah. sure sure well yeah i mean i just to, to, to generalize here you know it's like we have you have the apartments upstairs you have which generally the need for parking is you know at night when people are not at work at least in normal right. times when we're not all working from home but uh you know and in the business hours of the you know the studio are obviously during the day so it does seem like a pretty um good match as far as um you know two different uses in one building and uh, the location that it is um, which kind of um transitions into uh the you know the next conditional use item here which is you know does it fit with the character of the neighborhood and um you know I, my experience with berry street is that this is that's sort of the, exactly the type of thing that the uh, Ferry Street um, is for. Um, but um, like to let Frank and uh, Heather have any comments if they'd like on that. I, I agree. Yeah. <laughs> you just well, see, great. You see Ferry Street changing. You know, you see Ferry Street changing and all these wonderful things coming in. And so we would really like to be part of that. You know, others would be like pizza. Yeah. It's, yeah. Good. Yeah. Um, did this go through design review? Uh, it did. Okay. Yep, it went through the design review for the stairs um, and the decking, and uh -huh. they were good with everything. They didn't have any okay. any tweaks to the to the plan. They were quite happy with what was being proposed. Right. So there's no no conditions or recommendations from design review for the board to accept here. All right. Nope. I mean, it's ultimately it's your. You know, if this were an administrative permit, mm -hmm. I would be issuing that design review permit. Mm -hmm. So ultimately, the board is okaying that design review aspect of it. Mm -hmm. um, but there were no no concerns expressed under those standards whatsoever. Is this made up by you or by design review? Um, so I do the little yellow, right? The staff. This is your. The, your that's the staff. Yep, and then everything else is filled out by the DRC, okay, um, and the right. chair does this the is, circle. This is yep. Their, their form. Yep. This is a copy of their form. You just summarize what you're talking about, Kevin, so that oh. everyone. On. Uh, well, this design review has already has already reviewed this. I see no no uh, reason yeah. to uh, duplicate the work that they've done. So I, my recommendation okay. is to just discuss the report. Absolutely. Yeah. So for anybody who didn't go into the packet, um, I, know, I'm, I know Frank and Heather did, but I don't know if Trevor and Kelly or Kathy did. Um, the application packet that I circulated to is as part of this meeting materials, in addition to having my staff report and the application itself, I also included it's a four, uh, sorry, three page form from the design review committee where they evaluate all the applicable design review criteria and say whether or not the project is acceptable or unacceptable um, yeah. under that. And then there's a vote recorded at the end. So the design review committee approved the exterior changes going on here, um, including that rear vent um, four to nothing in favor um, two weeks ago. And, uh, okay. So, um, so I, you know, at the staff, the board, the applicants all appear to sort of agree that this very much fits with the a character of the neighborhood and be a great addition to Barry Street. Um, and um, at this time, I'd like to see if any of the members of the public uh, would like to uh, comment or speak at this time. If so, just so, speak up. So Trevor, Kelly. Just expressing my support. Thank you. Well, we great. do have your letter, your email. So thank you. Right. I just want to thank you guys for coming out tonight. It is helpful for us to, to know that the, the neighbors are in support of the project or not in support of the project. Uh, you know, it's like your perspective is very important. So so thank you for, for taking the time. Oh, that's good. Yeah, I think um, I got the information I need. The board members have the information they need. If so, I would accept a motion. Uh, the only 
only thing I remember remind the board of is the fact that we're still operating, still operating under uh, uh, quarantine rules, which <laughs> requires us to to make the final recommendation in or the final decision in a closed door session. Mm. Right. So this is nothing to say about the particular application at hand uh, here, but uh, as we've done with every application during this uh, you know, pandemic, uh, we've done it in deliberative session at the end uh, for the ease of the, not just the Zoom environment, but the hybrid environment. Um, and so that's what we will um, be doing. Okay. So that being said, I, I will make a motion to close the public hearing and uh, retire, the board retire to, uh, Deliberative session of what we're done here this evening. There's a motion by Kevin. Second the motion. And a second by Gene. Uh, Kevin, how do you vote? I vote yes. Catherine, how do you vote? Yes. Abby? Yes. Joe? Yes. Gene? Yes. Michael? Yes. And Rob, myself votes yes, that uh, you unanimously approved. Um, See if there's anything else before we adjourn this meeting. I don't believe so. Um, just a little note. So one, I'm sending out the deliberative session link. So you're gonna have to give me a couple minutes on that. Yep. But we do not actually have an application for the March 21st meeting. Oh, so if the board wishes, we can just take a day off. Um, if there are things that the board wants to talk about. We could always have a meeting as well for administrative matters, but it's up to the board. Well, we have a, okay. Well, I will be out of the country on March uh, 21st. So, uh, <laughs> so, that is, so our, our leader is gone. We can't possibly meet. So uh, maybe a, a night off. I will be returning by March 4th, uh, but I will be posted whether I will am in any shape to participate in a meeting on March 4th. So. Where are you going? Uh, I'm going to Norway. Right, you mean April 4th? April 4th, yes. Norway. Okay. Yeah. Mm, cool. Wow, good for you. And my sisters, niece and a nephew that I haven't met yet because of the pandemic. So. Aw, that's yeah. awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Okay. So, uh, let's see. I think we just have to adjourn. Uh, yeah. So, yeah. is there a motion to adjourn? Somebody huh? Okay, I'll make nope. the motion. <laughs> Sorry, I'll make the motion. Yeah. Uh, so moved by Catherine. Is there a second? Second. Second by Jean. Kevin, how do you vote? Yes. Catherine? Yes. Abby? Yes. Joe? Yes. Michael? Yes. Gene? Yes. Rob, myself was yes. Thank you all for joining us this evening. Uh, so hold on one second. Yep. Frank and Heather, um, yeah. just to let you know, so the, the process here is the board will um, go into deliberative session and vote on the actual application and you know what conditions to put on the approval. Um, and then there's uh, 45 days to actually issue the written decision. We work really hard to do that much, much sooner than that. Um, and but you and I can 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 talk. Um, but the the you know if you look at the bottom of the staff report, there's a sense of what types of conditions might be on the applicant on the on the approval. Um, and I'm just looking. Uh, Chances are good that we'll issue the permit with the decision, I think, but we'll find out. Okay. okay. Thank you so much. <laughs> there might be a little lag between the two. Yeah. Thank you so much. We really Let's appreciate it. Well, luck. if it's approved. Okay. I can't say yes, it's approved at this point, right? Um, thank, you <laughs> thank, you thank you for your time. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Sorry, I'm multitasking. Okay, uh, and you will move to adjourn already, right? Yeah. Sorry, I was doing too many things. Okay, have a lovely night, everybody.